Are we alone? For thousands of years, humans have scanned the skies, searching for evidence of life in the stars. Tonight, we journey into the depths of the cosmos with a man from Wales who's been battling for 30 years to prove that he has unlocked the secret of extraterrestrial life. The discovery that life is external to the Earth is perhaps the most mind-blowing discovery of perhaps two or three centuries. We travel to the tropics to tell the astronomer's story and to meet the legendary writer Arthur C. Clarke who believes extraterrestrial life is not only the stuff of science fiction. I can't believe that in this enormous universe of a hundred thousand millions galaxies and a hundred thousand millions star, whatever it is, that millions and millions that we are the only center of life join us on an odyssey in search of life in space last month's shuttle disaster has raised questions about the future of space exploration but tonight in an exclusive interview Arthur C. Clarke predicts that people will continue to travel beyond the Earth. He believes that this century will see the construction of a space elevator, a fixed link between the planet and a satellite in orbit. You can go up and down by purely electrical power, and then the cost of space travel is trivial. In fact, it costs less than a, a thousand dollars worth of electricity to go up you know, to this station in orbit, and you get most of it on the way back so the round trip it costs only a few hundred dollars. And when this happens, as I've said many times, the chief cost of space travel will be for catering and in-flight movies. An island close to the equator was the base for the space elevator in one of Clark's science fiction novels. In fact, tropical Sri Lanka has been his home for half a century. He came here in the 1950s to explore the underwater reefs and wrecks which lie off the coast. Far from the center of the scientific world, this is where he wrote the stories which have planted his idea of first contact with extraterrestrial life in the popular imagination. There's contact and there's discovery without contact. I think that's like to happen first when we pick up signals either on the radio or optical or some other spectrum which can't be natural, must have an um, artificial cause. Whether we can read them or not is immaterial. It would be a fantastic discovery. For now, the discovery of extraterrestrial life remains in the realms of science fiction. But a man born in Sri Lanka and working in Wales has cast a new light on the accepted facts of science. Far from his tropical homeland, Chandra Wickramasinghe has been professor of astronomy at the university in Cardiff for 30 years. Early in his career in Wales, he advanced a theory which was long resisted by many in the scientific establishment. He declared that life is not unique to the Earth, but its seeds are everywhere in the cosmos. If what we were finding was correct, the, the whole of established science has to be rethought, and the whole of biology essentially has to be rewritten, and, and that's a very tall order to expect scientists to contemplate. Um, they would resist that until they are forced to do so. In Wales, one scientist who's always had an open mind is Robert Gillard who became professor of chemistry in Cardiff at the same time Chandra Wickramasinghe was appointed. Hearing him describe his theories, he was reminded of revolutionary thinkers of the past. It was rather like the, 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 the notion of Galileo, for example, when he said, well, look, let's stop thinking that the Earth is the center of all things, and let's have a look and see what other things could be central. And in the same way, um, Chandra's views were that let's stop thinking that the Earth is the center of biology and maybe that there is no center, that it's a cosmic phenomenon. 
It was the so-called dust in space which fascinated Wickramasinghe. Most astronomers regarded it as nothing more than a nuisance, obscuring their view of distant stars. They thought it was inert, but long before he could prove it, he formed the idea that it might contain living material and that life on Earth may have come from space. From the start, Chandra Wickramasinghe worked with the eminent astronomer Sir Fred Hoyle. For almost 40 years, they challenged the scientific establishment. A lot of the work that I was involved in was being done in collaboration with uh, one of the greatest giants of the 20th century, and that was uh, Fred Hoyle. Uh, he's one of the acknowledged leaders of uh, astronomical thinking over maybe a hundred years or so. And to have his support was uh, a great uh, thing for me, and I think uh, maybe if not for that support, I would have been a little intimidated by the the responses that I've had. What he and Hoyle proved was that the dust which fills vast areas of the cosmos was not some inert material, but was made of complex carbon-based molecules. These had all the characteristics of bacteria, and they said they were microscopic organisms which could potentially grow and multiply like those which are the simplest forms of life on Earth. It was exciting, it was exhilarating, it was really absolutely the most important turning point in my life to discover that there was something so profoundly important in the researches that I was uh, engaged in. The implications would be that um, searching for life in outer space is worthwhile, that uh, we're not the only and unique uh, advanced possibilities in the cosmos, that all the um, items which when I was an undergraduate were science fiction, uh, these could actually become science fact in some way. So that it was a very mind-boggling approach. For more than a quarter of a century, Chandra Wickramasinghe kept going, developing his theories and seeing the rest of the scientific world gradually accepting at least some of his views. He now believes he stands on the verge of proving not only that life is out there, but exactly how it came to Earth from space. He traveled to Sri Lanka with him and his wife Priya to trace the beginnings of a career which brought him to Wales and may have led to one of the most important scientific discoveries of all time.